welcome everyone. We are uh, dealing with you today. We're Expedia Cruises on our travel talk featuring the world of Azamara and our very special guest, Captain Philippe. For those of you who have not been on a Zoom call before, everyone is muted due to the size of the group. You do have control if you want your video on and off. I find that with COVID, we're so separated. So if you feel comfortable, please turn your cameras on so we can see your lovely faces. If you do have any questions, there is a chat feature on your machine and you can put your questions in there. We will we'll be answering them during the presentation and also after the presentation. So thank you everybody for joining us. My name is Lisa Antlick. I'm one of the consultants at Expedia Cruises. Today's travel talk is being hosted by the six Edmonton and area location stores. We started these travel talks to inspire you, to educate you about what's happening in the travel industry and to help you plan your future vacations. So believe it or not, we just passed one year that travel has shut down. And if you are on this call, you probably love travel and love to see the world. Travel fulfills us, that's why we do it. And if you're like me, you are missing it. And I can't wait to get back to traveling when it is safe to do so. This is probably the longest I've gone without having my suitcase packed and my passport in hand. And I was actually thinking that I kind of got ripped off for my 10 year passport because I'm gonna probably miss about two years of it, but I don't think the government's gonna do anything for that. But I am very, very optimistic with the news of the vaccine rollout. Travel will start again. Most of you on this uh, call have either got uh, the first shot or know when you can get it. I got my first shot two weeks ago and I'm really excited because I know that's the first step in getting back to the world we once knew in travel. Our Expedia offices are open for you. Right now, due to restrictions, we ask you to call or email to set up appointments for us. Our professional consultants are here to help you plan your bucket list travels and also help you navigate through the new complexities of travel because it will look different when we start to travel again. So today we are having a very special event. We are joined by Eva Horn, business development manager about from Azamara, who will share with you a little bit about the world of Azamara. And I am thrilled to have our special guest coming to us from overseas. Captain Philippe is master of the Azamara Quest. He has given us the privilege of this exclusive interview and he will be sharing his life with us as a captain as well as his vast knowledge about his home country of Greece. So welcome even Eva and Captain Philippe. And now I'm going to turn it over to Eva to share with us a little bit about the world of Azamara. Uh, thanks Lisa for the fantastic um invitation or uh, invitation for the fantastic introduction on you know not only Azamara but of course the world of travel that we all love and miss so much. Azamara is a very very special company because we do things differently in the cruise sector in that cruise environment. Why Azamara? What makes us so special and unique is we collect people to people to cultures, to themselves when they're traveling, and to look at life with a different perspective. How do we do that? Under an umbrella, what we call destination immersion. We travel to those smaller, less traveled ports. We go to unparalleled destinations. We ensure that we stay longer in port. And for us, a late night or a longer stay is anything that's past 8 p.m. We have overnight stays, sometimes two or double overnights in beautiful places like Seville or in St. Petersburg, Russia, which allows us with our late nights and our overnight stays to offer things like night touring. We have immersive cultural experiences and this is really part of our DNA and very authentic to what we do. We have beautiful boutiques, hotels at seas that hug the coastlines of the world, offering you that feeling of a home away from home when you go back to a beautiful ship at the end of the day. You know, it's personally rewarding in every way because we offer all of these big advantages that really do make the difference. It's quality, it's value, and it's a promise to each one of you traveling with us that we will immerse you in the destination to really ensure that you connect. It's that focus with our time in port with overnight and late night stays. 
Now with Azamara in our- can I, ask, can I interrupt? Did you want yeah. to share your screen? Oh, sorry. Can you not see my screen? I cannot see your screen right now. That's not good. Hang on one sec. Let me get that back up for you. I thought we had this all set. One minute here. My apologies. Can you see it now, Lisa? Uh, we need the presentation mode. You will get it in one sec here. Sorry about that. My apologies. How about now? We got yeah. it. Got it. Okay, let me go where I was. There we are. All about exactly what we are so well known for. Thanks, Lisa, for the interruption there. So with Asamara, we have different types of voyages that we love to offer our guests. In our brochures, you will see voyages that cover a large geographical area. It would be something like all of South America or perhaps the Black Sea or Northern Europe. Then we have incredible voyages partnered with some of our tour operators as well as providers that take our clients to world events, things like the Monaco Grand Prix, the British Open with our partners like Perry Golf, the French Grand Prix or the Edinburgh Military Tattoo. But the ones that I love the most are our country intensive voyages. These are really special and our clients love these. These are more destination specific focus, which really gives us that opportunity to dive deep into each and every country. So not broad stroke, but definitely a immersive experience into each country that you see. And here's some examples on my screen from France to Croatia, to Spain, Italy, Iceland, Norway, Turkey, South Africa, Japan. And one of my favorites of course is Greece. And that's the reason why a lot of you are here today. Asamora has 51 voyages that start or end and include ports of call in Greece. And these are incredible. This is really small ship cruising at its absolute best. And it's really where we shine. It's life slowed down. And in all of these gorgeous ports, you'll explore them inside and out. Meeting people, experiencing culture, and seeing what you really want to see on shore rather than just being entertained on board the ship. You will be inspired by the traditions and all of the incredible moments that are authentically given to you by our incredible onshore team, as well as on board. So you can see some of the places that we visit here that touch into these incredible ports. We have the Black Sea in Northern Greece, the Mediterranean Melodies, the Ancient Wonders. One of the ones I did last year was the, Amis, the Dalmatian and Amalfi Coast, the Aegean, Spain, and so many more. The one that I love the best, of course, is our Greece Intensive. Now, this is where we really dive deep because you can take a look at my map on the screen there and you will see all of these incredible ports that we visit. This is a kaleidoscope of discoveries and you'll certainly hear a little bit more from Captain Philip here, but full of antiquities, culture, incredible food, amazing people. You know, it's seeped in legend and culture and history. And I love, like in all of Greece, there's over 6,000 beautiful islands and something like, what, 227 of them are only inhabited. So when we get an opportunity to sail to these small little places and anchor just offshore, and again, we're there for late night um, or throughout the entire day, you really get an opportunity to reflect on that incredible port of call that we're in. I personally remember, you know, visiting some of these ports and having just time to reflect in an incredible seaside restaurant, eating some of the amazing food, sipping some of the incredible wines from the local regions. And that's what stirs my soul and brings me back to these places that we travel to. Those are those memories that truly do last a lifetime and those I'll really cherish. So with Asnamara, your beautiful boutique hotels at sea, I'm gonna talk about these very briefly. We have three incredible sisters in our fleet. Now, soon to be four, as we've just acquired another one. These ships are beautiful. They are incredible ships that are purpose built for the type of destination type of cruising that we do. Now, they are all identical on the inside and you'll get a chance to see those in my coming slides here. But what I love about these Osamara ships is they have beautiful character on the inside of them. And you're gonna hear me say it again and again, these are gorgeous boutique hotels at sea. 
that truly feel like a floating home for you when you're traveling. And what makes it, of course, is not only the crew, but the incredible interior and um, all of the finishings that we have on the inside. We have wonderful suites and staterooms to welcome you home on board the ships. These are all formal Rem Renaissance class ships that have been completely reimagined from top to bottom. And on board our beautiful ships, you will find beautiful contemporary finishings. The staterooms are spacious. The ambiance is very relaxed and congenial. It never feels stuffy and it never feels pretentious in any way, shape or form. We have beautiful suites and staterooms to welcome you and they're very spaciously designed. We have different types of suites, club owner suite. We have the world owner suite as well. We have the club continent, which is my favorite. We also have gorgeous verandas that you see on my screen. And we also have ocean view and inside rooms as well. So plenty of different types of categories to see every need. The linens are buttery soft. I can tell you those beds are heavenly. They're very difficult to get out of in the morning, but it's also a very warm, welcoming space to come home to after a really busy day exploring. You know, camaraderie on our guests developed very quickly on Ozamara, and I love that our public spaces really is conducive to having just wonderful conversations. You can relax comfortably on the beautiful pool deck. You never have to put a towel down early to reserve a seat. There's plenty of space. You can go to our spacious lounges and the dining rooms that you'll see, and they're all designed with a very contemporary elegance and beautiful, beautiful feel to them. We have a fitness center and spa, bars and lounges, the den, onboard shopping, and lots of public spaces for you just to relax. We have incredible dining on board Azamara, and that's one thing that I really, really love. And it's probably something we don't put our feathers in our caps enough of. Our food and wine selections on board are fantastic. We have seven different venues there for you to choose from. Anything from very casual to an incredible specialty dining uh, experience in one of our two specialty restaurants, which are Aqualina or Prime C. Discoveries is our main dining room and has fantastic food, a, an array and selection of foods from the area and incredible service. And what I love, it's all open dining. If you want something casual, you can go to the patio and get a great grilled salmon on a salad and just take in those gorgeous vistas. Or if you want something a little more upscale and a true experience, you can visit one of those two specialty restaurants, Aquilina or Prime Sea or Steakhouse or Italian. Small surcharge of $30 to get into those unless uh, you are in a suite. But with our friends of Expedia, we have a special offering at the end that will nicely take care of that specialty dining uh, small fee to get you in. Truly an amazing experience. Now, the one thing I really love about Azamara is our inclusive amenities. We have quality and value that really make the magic and it is unsurpassed in this industry what we give you for the value that you get. Since we launched some 12 years ago, we really listened to our past guests. We have a very loyal clientele and we know they love that we include all of these inclusive amenities. So all the gratuities are included on board. Our standard spirits, beers, and wines are included. That's the food and beverages, things like specialty coffees, bottled water, wonderful tea selections, those are included. Our cultural evenings that of course I could spend the whole presentation talking about that really are special. And our concierge services. This is something that our guests really love. So perhaps in a port you wanna do something on your own, you need some advice, that's the concierge services that are available for you. And it's really th those added little values that make the layer so rich and thick. So you're gonna hear me talk a lot about our heart and our soul, our onboard family, which is our crew. And it's really what makes Ozamara so special. They are the ones that create the ambiance that makes you feel like you're truly coming home after a day of exploration. We like to say we help our guests on board for the first time, but it's our onboard crew and family that keeps them coming back again and again. And today we have a very special guest joining us and that is Captain Philip Azafukalas. Did I say that correctly? Probably That's not. Correct. <laughs> I'm sorry, Captain. I've had the privilege of sailing with you to Alaska 
and it was a very amazing experience. Of course, one of our favorite ports that we go to uh, or sailed to a few years back. But I know, Lisa, you have not sailed with the captain, and I'm sure some of your valued clients have some great questions about our captain and our crew and what life is like on board our beautiful boutique hotels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the mic over to you. You've heard me speak enough, and I'll let you ask some questions uh, of Captain Philip. So we're very fortunate to have him with us today. Over to you, Lisa. Thank you so much, Eva. Well, welcome, Captain Philippe. So very, very warm welcome. And I'm glad you took the time to spend with us. Can you tell us right now, where are you located? Well, first of all, uh, allow me to uh, say a big thank you for the invitation. And uh, I, I'm really, I feel honored and uh, privileged uh, to be part of this uh, discussion uh, since uh, uh, Greece is uh, my country of origin and I'm uh, always feeling uh, proud and privileged to talk about uh, Greece as well. Right now uh, I'm located uh, um, at port of Glasgow. This is uh, the port that uh, has been chosen almost a year ago in order to have uh, our uh, three beautiful ships uh, uh, laid up uh, for the period of uh, the pandemic until uh, we decide that it is uh, safe as a company to go back uh, to service. All right. Is there a reason that Azamira chose Glasgow as a place to park all three of their ships? Um, I think it's uh, the reason is because uh, it, 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 it has to do on a big part uh, with the uh, financial uh, uh, expenses uh, within a long-term uh, period. And it's also uh, a port that uh, can be well protected uh, during uh, the winter time, comparing to other ports all around Europe. Okay, all right, thanks for sharing that. We wanna know a little bit more about you. You grew up in a seafaring family. Can you share with us what inspired you to want to be at sea? Well, I have, uh, yeah, as you well mentioned, I grew up uh, um, at a seafarer uh, 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 family. It, it basically runs in the family through generations. Uh, I had also the privilege uh, to sail on uh, uh, a boat, which uh, actually my father was uh, a captain and co-owner on this boat. So I, I can uh, remember myself being on the bridge at the early age of six, seven years, uh, getting the, the, the wheel, uh, playing with the, the engines and uh, the levers back then. So. Uh, I think this is the time when I got uh, the, uh, I would say, the, the injection of the beauty of this profession. So, uh, as I was growing up, uh, I loved, uh, I, I, I made a few contracts with my father well, at the age of uh, 14, 15 years old. I got a little bit of experience uh, back there during uh, the summertime uh, breaks from school. And this is when I decided that this is what I want to do and this is what, uh, who I want to be. Okay. And, and did you choose Azamara for a reason? I've been part of uh, Royal uh, Caribbean for a quite extensive uh, time, uh, for uh, more than 20 years. Uh, I got uh, offered uh, the position of uh, Azamara, uh, uh, of uh, being an employee of Azamara. And since I have been uh, uh, employed by Azamara earlier in the past, and I knew what Azamara is and what they are doing at the cruising industry, I went for it 150%, I must say. It is definitely a, a phenomenal line. So regarding being on the bridge, a question that we've received from many passengers is, 
When do you rely on pilots and how much do you command the ship yourself? Well, uh, the pilot comes on board uh, only as uh, an advisor. So uh, uh, as part of the good uh, bridge resource management and uh, we all have in our minds that the ship uh, needs to be safe at any given point, uh, going through ports that perhaps the vessel hasn't been before or even ports that vessel has been uh, before but still can be uh, a mandatory requirement from the port and the local governments to have a pilot on board. He is joining our team as uh, a, an advisor, uh, give us uh, instructions, uh, information that we might not be aware of. But at the end of the day, the final uh, uh, command and the final call, and of course, the final responsibility still uh, goes to the captain. All right. Thanks for sharing is, that information. If you allow me, there is only one place in the world that uh, the pilot is actually having the full command of the vessel and the full responsibility as well. And that would be the Panama Canal. Okay. All right. Well, you've given us a great education on that. So obviously there's, there's no sailing and there's no passengers on board. How are you and the crew staying busy while you're on board the ship right now? Our, our main part is to uh, keep uh, the ship safe uh, while we are uh, waiting here in uh, Glasgow to return back to service. Uh, we are keeping uh, a specific number of crew on board. We call them safe money crew. And uh, while we are all here, we are making sure that the onboard management team uh, will do their uh, utmost uh, to have uh, the people, uh, to have the time of the crew members passing as enjoyable as possible. Uh, let's don't forget that uh, taking into consideration the uh, pandemic uh, restrictions that uh, are here in uh, uh, Glasgow and uh, restrictions that have been enforced uh, by the company in order to keep uh, our crew safe and healthy, um, they are not allowed to be outside of the port uh, limits. Uh, that being said, it uh, makes uh, our uh, role into keeping them as much as entertained on board um, more important, I would say. What we do, we are trying to organize uh, some uh, small uh, events for the crew, um, a little bit of uh, gatherings taking into consideration of course always uh, the safe distances given the circumstances of uh, pandemic uh, making sure that they are all uh, well fed and when i say that we are making sure i'm including myself uh, on this as well so there are times during uh, the week uh, that uh, i bring myself uh, down to the galley after all, it is a, a period that we are all performing uh, duties that we wouldn't perform during a normal operation. So uh, cooking is something that I do enjoy doing. And uh, I, bring, I find myself in the galley uh, making some uh, uh, Greek dishes uh, and desserts for the crew, which I must say, after the first 15 minutes that they are uh, served on the uh, messes, they are all disappeared. <laughs> Share with us some of the things that you've cooked for the, for the crew. Um, some Greek dishes. Uh, it's, I have done uh, a full uh, dish of uh, Greek souvlaki with additional gyros. Uh, um, stuffed uh, um, uh, tomatoes with uh, rice and uh, um, pork inside. Um, we have done uh, some uh, Greek desserts like uh, halva, 
Uh, tomorrow we are uh, um, uh, preparing some uh, local uh, traditional Easter cookies uh, and uh, biscuits. We are also going to have some uh, sweet breads with a traditional Greek recipe. We are making burger, uh, burger uh, uh, days, uh, again, with a Greek recipe. So we're trying. Sounds fabulous. How many crew members are there on board right now? Right now we are having approximately 110 uh, crew on board, including the ones that they are at this point in quarantine, waiting for this period to pass until they get out and start working. So you said that people are doing jobs they nor normally don't do. So you're cooking, are, are you doing the dishes as well? Um, no time for it. <laughs> Let me put it this way. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Uh, I see a beautiful picture of family, a beautiful little daughter. Can you share with us some of the activities you like to participate when you're not at sea? Uh, I try to keep uh, my uh, life outside uh, from the ship uh, pretty active. And I do enjoy a lot to spend time with my family. Um, I'm quite active on the sports as well. I'm uh, skiing. Uh, obviously during winter time uh, in Greece. Uh, I do scuba diving. I'm a certified uh, rescue diver. And uh, what I'm actually enjoying a lot and I love uh, since I was uh, um, young is uh, basketball, which I'm actually still playing. Okay. All right, thank you so much. And your daughter is absolutely precious. She, I think you shared with us, she's six years old? She's six years old, correct, yeah. Okay, all right, perfect. Um, tell us a little bit about, what, what do you love about being on board a ship? Well, uh, being on board is uh, never, can never be a routine. Every day is different. And uh, we do different things. Uh, there might be some kind of basic things that could be considered as, uh, let's say, a daily routine. But then again, things happen and uh, it really keeps us uh, busy. So I guess this uh, 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 quote, if you allow me to say that every day is a different day, uh, it's something that keeps me excited. Uh, another thing that I do enjoy um, on board uh, the ships is basically the interaction with uh, our guests. Uh, I do love to talk with people. I do love to talk with uh, uh, our guests. Uh, and as a captain, I am really interested to see if the reason that they are on board is actually fulfilled. They are on board to have a good time. They are on board to have uh, fun with us. And uh, myself and the crew, of course, we are here to do exactly that, to have them, uh, to make them having the best time of their life. Okay. And, and truly, I've been blessed to have been able to sail twice with Azamara. And, and I agree with you. I think the staff just goes above and beyond to make people feel very, very comfortable. What is your favorite, well, I think your favorite place probably will be Greece, which we're going to get to talk about. Is there a place in the port in the world that you haven't been to yet that um, is on your list to sail? Um, I've been in quite many places all around the world. One place that I haven't been yet is uh, Australia. I have heard uh, a lot of things uh, about it, a lot of good things. And uh, I'm really looking forward to, to go one day with Azamara as well. All right, wonderful. Now, when you're talking about the crew and the things that they do, one of the special things that Azamara does is the white nights or evenings under the stars, which is probably a highlight, I think, for everyone. Can you tell us a little bit about what the team does to prepare for this evening? 
the White Knight is a, a, an exclusive uh, theme night from Azamara. Um, it's happening on every cruise. It is uh, very well planned uh, in advance uh, on which ports it's going to take place. And uh, it does require quite some preparation from the crew as well. Uh, there is a specific uh, dining experience during that night. Um, there is a different setup. And of course, all hands are out there. You might see the uh, hotel director uh, serving uh, pancakes. Uh, you might see the FMB uh, cook, manager cooking at the spot. You might see uh, the chief engineer serving our guests as well. And of course, uh, you will see the captain going around uh, uh, each table. At least this is what I love to do. And as I said before, talking with the guests, trying to see if they are having a good time. And if there is something that I can do better for them, myself and the crew on board, to make sure that we are going to do it. That sounds wonderful. So I think we're now going to get to your hometown or your home country of Greece. Um, I'm just going to flip back because you said you love to cook. So when we're talking about Greek food, tell us what's your favorite dish. Oh, I'm very easy with food, trust me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I would say the favorite dish is uh, spinach rice. It is uh, um, uh, a, a cooking food. Uh, it is cooked, basically, and it uh, contains uh, spinach and rice. It's something that I enjoyed it from uh, when I was young, and I still enjoy it as well. I'm very good in, I'm, I'm enjoying uh, uh, barbecue. So whatever has to do with barbecue, it's something that uh, I do enjoy doing and tasting as well. And that involves meat and fish. All right, thank you so much. So we have a list here of, of Azamara's ports. And one of the things about Azamara is being a small ship, it can get into ports that the larger ships cannot get to. And I think most people on this call will know Athens and Santorini and Mykonos. But as America can get into some of the other tiny little ports that nobody else can. So will you share with us a little bit of information on these ports? Um, what can we see when we're there? Tell us the highlights. Of course. Well, uh, Greece is uh, quite famous for uh, the weather. The sun that you are having in, uh, I would say, 80% of the year. Uh, the climate, which is uh, very good, uh, especially in the islands uh, during the summer. Um, uh, it's the people, the, the, how people, how warm people are. Uh, it's the food, it's the entertainment, and of course, uh, the thing, uh, the, all the, those things that it, they can see while they are on its Greek destination. In other words, it's a, it's a combination of uh, excellent, uh, good elements, which personally I would uh, take into serious consideration for vacation. And this is what I'm actually uh, considering when I choose to go to a destination for, uh, for vacation as well. There has been though, out of that list that uh, you showed me uh, that I can see you showed earlier on the screen, uh, I have uh, some uh, specific um, destinations that uh, uh, I have personally been. Uh, I have spent quite some time as part of my uh, vacation. And uh, uh, the first one is Ayus Nikolaos, uh, as you are uh, showing on the, on the screen. It's actually the destination that I has been I had been during summertime of 2019 with my family. So my my experience in Agios Nicolas is pretty um, fresh, I would say. Um, Agios Nicolas is known uh, for having like uh, three faces uh, to the sea. 
It is uh, located on a crazy coast. It uh, seamlessly blends the charm of a small fishing village with the glamour of a cheap resort town. I think and it is uh, really. Frozen? Hello? Is it me or is it you? Lisa, that would be you frozen right now. Okay, Lisa's going to sign off and come back in. Um, but Philip, you can uh, continue talking about uh, this beautiful place. Sure, no problem. Well, as I was saying, I use Nicolas is a really beautiful city and it is uh, actually the perfect base for exploring uh, smaller uh, islands uh, around uh, Crete. Uh, there are also uh, some uh, uh, very interested uh, surroundings during uh, Ayos Nikolaos. And there are a lot of things uh, to see in Ayos Nikolaos as well. You have an archaeological uh, museum. Uh, it is uh, of Ayos Nikolaos, which is located uh, near uh, the Lake Bulismeni. It's uh, basically the lake that you just showed on the previous uh, slide, <clears throat> which displays treasures from the Neolithic uh, Minoan and uh, Roman eras. There are nearby cafes and restaurants which are basically offering uh, sweeping views and uh, overlooking breathtaking uh, uh, images uh, just on the lake. There is a very small uh, marina with uh, small boats and uh, little yachts. Uh, the access on, the, on this uh, lake is uh, a little bit, it is meant to be for a small boats, but still it is a great area for walking around. You can see also uh, some other archaeological museums, uh, pretty famous like uh, Knossos Palace. Uh, this is located uh, in Heraklion basically, and it, it is uh, uncovering the secrets of uh, Crete's history. On this journey to the uh, Knossos Palace, it is, uh, uh, you can actually travel to the Museum of Heraklion, boasting a, a stunning collection of uh, artifacts from Cretan history and prehistory as well. Another uh, location that it is uh, close to Agios Nikolaos is uh, Spina Spinaloga Island. This is a quite uh, famous uh, destination and uh, pretty, interesting to see, pretty interesting to see as well. Um, it used to be a former defense fortress and uh, until uh, uh, I would say from 1957 until 65, 70s, it was used uh, as a leper colony. So all the uh, uh, people who would be sick, uh, they would be transferred uh, uh, on this uh, island. It is also an island that uh, has been uh, 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 part of a, a quite famous uh, film, uh, which is called The Island. It was transferred uh, due, uh, around five years ago to the Greek TV. It became also an, inter an international movie as well. And there are also, there is a small village uh, which is opposite from this island, where the biggest part of the shooting took place. It was constructed for that reason as well. Now, <clears throat> um, as I, I said before, Lake Vulismeni is uh, a pretty interesting place uh, to walk around. It offers uh, magnificent, ma magnificent views. It's very beautiful during the night as well. And uh, it's right on the center of uh, uh, Agios Nikolaos, very close to the place where our ship is docking. If you can see, everybody I believe can see that uh, on, the, on the slide that you're showing, there is the position of uh, our docking place as well. It's on the upper part of, uh, of the slide. So this is where the ship is docked. Now, another interesting place in Agios uh, Nikolaos uh, is uh, uh, a specific uh, uh, a road, I would say it, uh, uh, it is the shopping road of Agios Nikolaos. It's a pedestrian uh, street. It is quite close to, to the lake. 
and people uh, go around uh, this uh, street. There are little shops in the area, little restaurants, little uh, coffee places. It's a quite an interesting area to be. You can, uh, you, you will be able to meet as well a lot of uh, locals in this area. Um, another place which is quite close to Agios Nikolaos, I would say 10 minutes driving, is uh, Krita. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a small village approximately 11 uh, kilometers away from Agios Nikolaos. And it is uh, consisted by white uh, washed houses into the hillside. It's uh, one of the villages that it is uh, an experience definitely not to miss. Uh, there is a, a small agroticos sineterismos. It's an uh, uh, agricultural cooperation, which is uh, consisted by the women of uh, the village, and they make handmade local products. Uh, they are having uh, local recipes, uh, local treats, uh, local desserts that uh, everybody can take, uh, can buy, and take home uh, with them. And of course, uh, the food uh, in uh, Crete, as we will say quite extensively on this uh, uh, discussion, is an amazing experience. Uh, the, the local uh, drink in Crete is called uh, uh, raki. Uh, uh, raki is something, a good raki is uh, a drink that uh, is made only in uh, Crete. And allow me to say it is extremely strong. Uh, it can be up to 75% of alcohol. My personal experience uh, with uh, Raiki, I'm not a person who drinks. And uh, during uh, uh, my vacation, and I will just share an experience with you. During my last vacation in Crete, we went to a small trip with family. Uh, in the mountains, just, just to see the rest of the villages in, uh, in the area where we were living and where we were staying. Now, in Crete, uh, there is a specific, uh, uh, if you allow me, tradition of welcoming uh, foreign people at the entrance of each village. So at the entrance of, of each village, while you're driving, uh, a local... Uh, um, the local old people would stop you and they would offer you a little shot of raki. Now that would be around 11 o'clock in the morning. And uh, the problem is that if you refuse to, to drink it, they take it personally and they can also be offended as well. So I had no other okay. option to have that shot. And you can imagine that after At 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> that would be at around 11 o'clock, 11.30. So you can imagine that after visiting four or five villages, I was not in state to drive. So my wife had to, to take over driving. That was a little small experience by the Crete, by the Crete hospitality. Um, when you're there, do as the locals do. <laughs> correct. <laughs> All right. now, any other favorite the... ports you have? Yeah. Uh, Hanya is also a beautiful place, still in Crete. Uh, Hanya, it is a Ven Venetian uh, splendor, which uh, gives the area uh, the, the name of the second largest city uh, as a districtly Italian, with a districtly Italian air in, uh, in Crete. Uh, it has Greek and Ottoman uh, influences, and uh, there is a quite unique history uh, with Hanya. Um, uh, from the place that we are docking, it's uh, a distance of three miles. And there will be also a complementary shuttle to the marketplace area. Quite uh, a lot of things to see in Hanya. Uh, there is the Firka Fortress, uh, uh, which is uh, which was built uh, late in uh, uh, 1530s. 
This fort uh, has had uh, many purposes over the years. Actually, in uh, 1913, it was uh, the site where uh, King uh, Constantine witnessed the raising of the Greek flag, signifying the reunification of Crete with Greece. Uh, the Venetian lighthouse, quite famous as well. It is uh, an in integral uh, part of the uh, expansion and the actually modernization of the harbor in the late uh, 1500s. The, the lighthouse stands as a city landmark. Uh, it's uh, quite interesting as you can walk along the harbor and get a closer uh, view and of course magnificent pictures. It's a great opportunity. Um, Venetian dockyards are also in the area. It is a monument to Hanya's importance as a trading uh, center for the Venetian Republic. The dockyards are where great merchant ships came uh, for repairs and uh, refitting as well. Crete uh, was in the old days heavily forested and supplied a great deal of uh, lumber for shipbuilding as well. Many of the original dockside warehouses, warehouses have been uh, remarkably well preserved uh, up to the point and up to the date as we speak right now. Um, now, the Fragostello Fortes, uh, as you can see uh, in uh, the picture, is uh, on top of the famous uh, exotic beach uh, of Balos with uh, very beautiful views. Balos is also a beach that I would definitely recommend visiting. Uh, the, the, the water and uh, uh, the, the sand in the area and generally the place is something that uh, is not to be missed as well. Uh, a few other uh, beaches that I would definitely recommend around the Crete area is Elafonisi, very famous, very popular. Uh, Falasarna, the Fragostello Beach, uh, Kalathas Beach and Kalives Beach. Those specific beaches are beautiful and they are close to, to Hanya. Wonderful. Oh, you, make, you make us definitely want to go there for sure. Um, of, of, the, of the list, any other ports that um, not be missed? Well, um, another uh, place that I, uh, I love, uh, part of the islands of uh, Greece is Patmos. It's a uh, uh, quite stunning island. Uh, it has been an important Christian uh, uh, pilgrimage site for its uh, role in the writing of the book of uh, Revelations uh, in the Christian Bible. Patmos uh, has also excellent beaches uh, and great gentle uh, mountains and hills. And for those that uh, they are uh, walkers, they have uh, quite a, a lot of places uh, to walk around uh, and uh, visit small villages away from the center of Patmos as well. Looks absolutely um, beautiful, the water, the houses. Yeah, these are pictures from uh, uh, Patmos. Uh, actually, the main center of Patmos is uh, called Hora. It's uh, the capital uh, with its uh, traditional white west uh, uh, homes, narrow lanes and uh, coastal views uh, as well. Um, the uh, Grotto of Revelation is actually where uh, St. John saw visions uh, that became the book of Revelations and it is uh, located at the top of uh, um, the hill uh, right just above the center of uh, uh, Hora. Uh, monastery of uh, St. John was uh, built uh, uh, 993 years ago, and this is where it was uh, um, said first that uh, St. John uh, wrote the book of uh, Revelations and later on uh, a, a, a specific uh, monastery was built at the top of the hill. 
Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Any other now, places that you would recommend in Greece? Yeah, I mean, uh, um, as we have uh, said uh, uh, before, I mean, Patmos has uh, also beaches uh, around in the area, uh, uh, beautiful views, little uh, islands, uh, not uh, being, there are no inhabitants over there, but it's still worth uh, for a visit uh, with local boats that can leave from uh, Hora in Patmos. And uh, it really, it's really worth it for going uh, around uh, on foot. It's not a, a, a huge island, so whoever enjoys uh, hiking, it's a beautiful place uh, to walk around. Another place that it is uh, one of uh, my favorites is uh, uh, Spetses. Um, Spetses uh, has uh, a lot of history on uh, uh, Greece and now since lately we had the 200 uh, years from uh, Greece uh, uh, liberation from uh, the Ottoman uh, 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 war, then uh, I would say that Spetses has played an important role on uh, the Greek war of uh, independence. Uh, whatever, what you can find in uh, Spetses, interesting things uh, like uh, Bubulina's museum, which is actually honoring uh, heroine that played uh, a large role at uh, the Greek war of independence. As I said, 200 years ago, it's the former home of uh, uh, the naval commander, the female naval commander, Lascarina Bubulina, who basically uh, delivered all her fortune uh, to the Greek war and uh, played also an important role leading the, um, uh, the, independence, uh, the independence troops. There is also a monastery, monast the monastery of uh, Agios Nikolaos, uh, which is uh, a short walk from the port. Uh, it's a former monastery that includes a striking marble bell tower and was the site where the island's residents raised the revolutionary flag at the beginning of the War of Independence, of independence, of independence in uh, 1821. Um, Beautiful beaches around uh, uh, the island, and uh, one of the most famous is called uh, Agia Paraskevi, where you can take a bus from the town and head uh, to uh, one of the most beautiful uh, uh, beaches. It's a, a dense pine forest, provides plenty of uh, shade and sun beds, and make uh, for a relaxing uh, retreat. It's a, it's a place that I definitely recommend. Well, I now, think you make uh, us want to go to these wonderful places. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> well, another, uh, the main center of uh, Spetses is called uh, Depia Square, where uh, there is also uh, a quiet history behind uh, uh, that uh, during the 1821 Greek Revolution. In nowadays, it's the center of, uh, for visitors and the hub uh, of the island with many restaurants, cafeterias, pastry shops, and great shopping in the area. Anybody can uh, buy some uh, special gifts uh, uh, to bring back home to their family and uh, friends as well. A career's ride is something that I would uh, definitely recommend and not only for the romantic ones. Uh, it is uh, another way to explore uh, the area, especially the port area of Spetses, and uh, a, a ride during uh, the sunset will get you, will give you some uh, spectacular views, and of course, some great opportunities for uh, pictures as well. Um, the picture that you are having on the slide is. Uh, actually now the old harbor, 
uh, it is called the Baltiza and is located at a distance of uh, one and a half kilometers away from the previous pictures, away from the new harbor known as Dapia. It was an important shipbuilding center during the 18th and 19th century. And uh, uh, in nowadays, it is uh, uh, the uh, port for little and small uh, boats uh, and fishing boats in the area as well. And that is the original house from uh, uh, Las Carina Bubulina, the, the heroine of uh, uh, the uh, uh, Greek uh, War of uh, 1821. That's her original house, which is now a, a museum. And here comes the food again. So a very local uh, <laughs> treat that uh, you can find the spetses. It's a very local dish. It's called spetsofai. You have it on the top uh, uh, picture, top left picture of the slide. Uh, it is uh, actually consisted uh, by a sausage or tender pieces of pork with uh, piquant peppers, casserole and casserole. Uh, very nice, very tasty, and you can choose how spicy you can have it. And then I think you're going to talk a little bit about Volos. Yes, Volos is uh, another place uh, that I personally enjoy going uh, uh, for uh, vacation as well. It is uh, one of uh, my favorite destinations uh, during winter and during summertime as well. Uh, it's one of the largest and most attractive cities in Greece as, and uh, it, is, it is as well as one of the country's most uh, prominent uh, ports. The modern city built near the site of ancient Iolkos and dominates the region of Magnesia from its position at the foot of Mount uh, Pelion. Now, Volos is uh, quite famous because if anybody um, remembers uh, Jason and the Argonauts, it is actually Jason and the Argonauts set off on their uh, quest for the fleece of the golden wood winged uh, ram Chrysomalos from uh, Volos. That is the connection uh, between uh, Volos and uh, Jason uh, the Argonauts. And you can also find there <coughs> the what so called Argonauts uh, Avenue, which is basically uh, um, an avenue passing uh, puzzling cafes, charming shops, uh, bobbing fishing boats, and impressive yachts. Now, another uh, place that it is worth uh, visiting in Volos is uh, Meteora. Uh, as you can see from the pictures, it is, uh, I think it's on the next slide that you're having. Yeah, uh, you can have some uh, breathtaking views in Meteora. It's uh, just one hour drive uh, from the port of Volos. And the first ones who arrived in the area to use the cliffs of Meteora for spiritual reasons were the Orthodox Christian Hermit monks. They came here uh, between the 9th and the 10th century to isolate uh, themselves in the many caves which uh, found scattered among the cliffs. For centuries, those monks lived in absolute and complete isolation. And as the monks were so exposed to weather and other threats, uh, they would regularly receive uh, donations of food, water, and clothing from the local villagers. So this is how basically they were surviving. Uh, the villagers honored them as holy men and very worthy 
of their support. So it was a bond that was really special but unique as there was a little interaction among them. Um, now, through the years, the monastery was built in uh, uh, Meteora and uh, you will be able to find some uh, villages around Meteora as well. On uh, the next slide, uh, you will see another place close to Volos. It's called uh, Makrinitsa, very uh, traditional and unique area. And it's, uh, I believe, one of the best uh, uh, spots that uh, you can have a walk around. It's full of pedestrian, pedestrian uh, little streets. And uh, the views down to towards uh, the Volos Valley is something that uh, it is magnificent. Now on the next uh, slide is uh, uh, Mount Pilion, which is basically uh, on top of uh, Volos area. Uh, Mount Pilion uh, has 24 villages, little vo small villages, like uh, Portaria, Porta and uh, it is uh, offering as well a magnificent um, uh, opportunities to walk around, choose one or even more villages. Uh, Walk around, uh, walk around there, speak with the locals, uh, speak uh, with uh, um, uh, people all around. It's something that they do enjoy. And of course, quite a lot of things uh, to see in uh, the area and uh, spend a little bit of uh, time over there. Like every place, there are quite a lot of uh, restaurants and uh, beaches in Volos. Uh, Volos is very famous for uh, the, uh, another drink like Raki in Crete, but it's called Tsipuro. Uh, there are many restaurants that uh, they serve this uh, Tsipuro. And uh, you can actually combine it with uh, a, memor a memorable meal. Uh, because Chipro can, can make you a little bit dizzy if you drink it without food. Um, there is a specific area in uh, Volos which is called Chipuradica. It's not far from where we are docking. It is a place where uh, they are not serving complete full dishes. They are serving small dishes, local treats, with Tsipuro. So the best way to enjoy these uh, little restaurants is to have something before you start drinking Tsipuro, to have a small dish before you start drinking. And this is what they are actually offering. And that would be from my side. <laughs> Captain Philip, thank you for sharing your, your vast knowledge. And, and again, one of the wonderful things about the small ship of Azamara is it can get into these beautiful, beautiful ports. So thank you for sharing all your knowledge about Greece with us. You've educated us and inspired us. And I'm probably sure that most people that are on this call are saying, okay, when can I go? So thank you so much for joining us on that. I'm going to turn it over to Eva now, who's going to share a little bit more about some of the promotions that are happening with Azamara, and then we will open it up for some questions. Absolutely. Thanks, Lisa. Just before I do, just thanks to all of the Edmonton area franchises and partners that are all on and the incredible teams that you all have, because without you... Of course, we wouldn't have your support to ensure that clients get a chance to visit beautiful places like Greece. So because you're such amazing partners to us, we wanna offer something special. And for those of you who are attending today, we have a special offering of three or four or $500 onboard spending credit for you. With Azamara, virtually everything is all included on board. 
So this extra onboard credit can go towards some of these amazing shore excursions that Captain Philip was talking about. It can go towards some specialty dining, some fabulous spa treatments or anything special that you wanna treat yourself to. So all you have to do is talk to any one of the advisors from St. Albert, Sherwood Park, South um, East, Southwest, or Trewigler, and of course, Randy and Lisa at Edmonton West, and they will set you up with this fantastic offer. Now, currently with Azamara, we are not sailing. We hope to get into the water back in June, but right now we have something very special to offer to you as our guests. And that is called our buy one and get the second one off at 60%. So this is incredible value and it's also combinable with this. So it's wonderful if you wanted to go to an incredible destination around the world on one of our amazing three soon to be four ships, they uh, will give you the opportunity to have first guest, second one is 60% off and then you get the three, four, five hundred dollars And the nice thing, we also have solo and single rates for those of you who like to travel as a solo traveler. So this is very, very good value for you at that point. And it's also combinable with our quarterly savings if you've sailed with us before, our back-to-back -back, and our loyalty benefits as well. Now I know we're in such unprecedented times and you really need that flexibility when you're planning travel. We have that, it's called our Cruise with Confidence. Right up to 48 hours before you sail, you do have that peace of mind to be able to change your sailing right through until April 30th if you book it by the end of May. So hopefully by then we'll have somewhat of a, a normal travel schedule amongst us and until then you've got that peace of mind to ensure you've got your travel plans protected. And you know with Captain Philip, you just explained it so beautifully but there's thousands of miles of incredible coastline and you know thousands of islands, 6,000 of them or something, unparalleled history, amazing food, culture, we could talk on and on about Greece, but what I love about Azamara is we get into those smaller, less traveled ports and we just slow life down. It's unrushed, it's unhurried, and it's our commitment to that destination immersion. So I love this quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson, do not follow where the path may lead, go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. I will let you pronounce the thank you because I know I will not do it correctly um, Lisa, do we have some time with questions or should we just pop those into the box? Uh, I think we've got a couple minutes for some questions. Um, one of the ones that came up is what is the most challenging port to sail into? The most challenging port? Um, Well, as long as you are having, uh, you take into consideration all uh, safety measures and uh, weather conditions, and uh, uh, these are all factors that uh, uh, a captain takes into consideration. Now, uh, there are a little, a few ports uh, 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 all around the world that, with a little bit of uh, wind and a little bit of uh, strong. Uh, uh, weather uh, conditions, they can be challenging. Um, one of them for my, according to my experience is uh, uh, a place called East London in South Africa, where due to the uh, limited space in the port for uh, maneuvering, uh, just a little bit of wind can uh, create uh, some uh, uh, challenging uh, experience uh, in order to be able to to complete the maneuver. Okay, wonderful. Um, we have a question from Randy. How fast have you gotten the ship to? Are you talking about speed, Randy? Okay. Not. So how fast we can we Randy can wants have to know the... how fast you can travel. <laughs> um, the maximum uh, cruising speed that we can have is uh, uh, 18, 18 knots. If we boost a little bit uh, our engines, we can reach up to 18 uh, and a half. I have seen the ship going 24 knots, but that would be because of a current. 
Okay. All right. So you shared with us, obviously, from your from your home country, that Greece is one of your favorite itineraries. Is there? What is your second favorite itinerary? Um, Europe is uh, one of my favorite uh, itinerary uh, generally. Uh, I I do enjoy it a lot. Uh, there are some uh, magnificent magnificent pla magnificent places in uh, Italy, Spain, uh, France that we are visiting, and uh, uh, again, it is a combination of uh, values that, uh, for myself, I'm I'm taking into consideration. It's not just the place. It's not just the food. It's not just uh, uh, the culture. For me, for my vacation, is a combination. So Europe is a region that I do enjoy. Thank you so much. Uh, one last question we have uh, more, Eva, in terms of, I know we're all trying to plan far enough in advance. The question is, when will 2023 itineraries be released? Ah, that's a great question. I'm going to actually answer two questions in one. So I'll, I'll um, address the 2023. Um, one of the questions that popped up was how many passengers do our ships hold? So all of them hold on average 700 guests and 408 incredible crew. Um, somebody also asked me how big our ships were, and they're just over 30,000 tons. Is that correct, Captain Phillip? Like 30,277 tons. So again, it's small ship at his best. Our 2023 voyages will hopefully be released soon. Now I know that's a pretty generic uh, way to explain it, but with the fourth ship in addition, our product team is working very, very quickly and as fast as they can to ensure that we get some amazing ports in there. We visit all seven continents all around the globe. So we want to ensure that we do it right. We're not just going to rush to ensure that we get product out there. We want to do it the Ozamara way. So for 2023, stay tuned. In the coming months, we should have the first set of voyages out for you. And of course, your incredible Expedia team will be the first to give those to you. Thank you. Yeah, I think we're all kind of anxious to start to travel again. Uh, one yeah. more question came in. Uh, to, for Captain Philip, what is your favorite as amazing evening that you've put on? It's a good one. All of them. <laughs> they are all wonderful. Um, uh, it, that's a tough one because uh, the venues that we are choosing, they are all one and one. It is all exceptional and we are trying to get the best out of uh, the location that we are organizing to have the as amazing. So it, it is a very long process, by the way, uh, to choose uh, and organize, to choose the port and organize an as amazing evening. It is a process that takes almost two years. So it is something that we, it is very well and very carefully planned and uh, very rare we are getting not excellent results out of uh, an as amazing evening. Now, what I love, what I would hope, and what I'm actually working for together with uh, the itinerary planning of, uh, 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 for, for the future is to have and as amazing evening in Athens, in a place called, in Athens, Greece, in a very popular place. It's an actually a big theater just below Acropolis for those that they have visited uh, Athens, Greece. It's a very popular international popular place and a lot of uh, events are taking place there. And this is what we are trying to arrange. We'll see. I think that would be so exciting. So thank you so much. Thank you, Captain Philippe. Thank you, Eva, for joining us. I truly appreciate it. I think you have inspired us, educated us, and made us definitely want to go on a cruise and definitely on Azamara. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to finish up. Just want to let you know, thank you for joining us. Although travel is currently paused, 
we will start traveling again. And as Eva was mentioning, 2023 is going to be released. So there is a pent up demand. And if you have the desire to travel, especially with the cruise with confidence, so no risk, I think it's a great time to start planning. Please call your consultants. We are here to help you navigate. Uh, reminder to please follow us on Facebook. Also check our YouTube channels. We post all our uh, events on this. And for those of you who have been following us tonight, we are having a, another evening with Uniworld and Insight Vacations. Next week, we're gonna be doing Virgin Voyages. So thank you for your past travels. Thank you for your future travels. And thank you for the time that you've spent with us today. I enjoy, I uh, wish you the rest of a wonderful evening and thank you again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye.